Hi everyone, so I thought I'd get on camera today and show you my kind of everyday routine and um, what skincare I use, what makeup I like to put on my face and what products I use um, in terms of styling my hair. Um, to be honest I don't really wear that much makeup day to day, I just wear kind of like enhancing products and um, just little things, tweaking things here and there. Um, and today we're going to um, New York to look at apartments and I just want a little bit of makeup, you know, to look presentable. So now moving on to the base, um, I'm happy with my skin. I like the way my skin looks and I believe that foundation shouldn't mask the skin. I don't think you should apply it in, in every single area because you don't need it in every single area. On my skin I have freckles but I'm pretty happy with my freckles. My skin does look a bit better if I cover them because it just looks more even and refined but just the smallest amount of coverage makes a huge difference. And I've really been liking the combination of these two products together. This is the Lumine CC Colour Correcting Cream. Again, forget about the marketing, forget about the CC thing. Let's just think that, you know, it's it's basically a tinted moisturiser um, and it's good. And that's in the colour Light, which is not super fair. Like, if you're extremely fair, light will probably be a bit too um, warm for you or um, yellow. And then I mix it with the Revlon Photo Ready Skin Light. Now this product is not talked about enough. I really like it, especially in this colour, because it gives a beautiful shine to the skin. It's not glittery. It just reflects light. Um, it looks very, very natural. And it's just like a luxury product that's not expensive. So I really like it. And they do like four shades as well, depending on what skin type you are, skin tone. So I apply a small amount of that. Well, that much on the back of my hand and then I take a bit of this preferably double the amount of this just so I don't end up with a shimmery disco ball face and I take one of my favorite brushes of all time um, this is the Real Techniques expert face brush and it's just really nice to kind of press in foundation into your skin it's just super quick to use if you're pressed for time so I just mix those together with my brush and then I normally start where I get quite red, which is, you know, around here on most people. So I just press it into the skin and just blend it out. And if you just look back in the mirror and you see how much difference already, you realise you don't need a lot of product. Then I'm just applying a real small amount on the forehead. I feel like the forehead is one of the most obvious areas that you can really tell when someone has a lot of makeup on. I find that you can really get away with wearing makeup here, but for some reason if you wear it there, it kind of ages you and just makes you look a bit cakey. So I like to apply the smallest amount there because I really don't have many imperfections there. It's literally just a couple of freckles. Now onto concealer. I've had a bit of a revelation. Revelation, is that the word? I think it's, yeah, revelation, is that a real, yeah, I think that's a real word. Um, I've had a bit of a revelation with concealer, and because I'm 24 now, and I know I'm not old by any means, but um, I've started to notice I've got a little bit of fine lines around here, so I can't wear the amount of concealer I used to wear, even though I never needed it in the first place, you know, you just get into bad habits. Um, and I was on a set recently, um, assisting a makeup artist, and she used this, she swore by it, and this was honestly the first makeup product I ever got my hands on um, getting into luxury makeup and I was kind of like well is it a concealer, is it a highlighter, what is it? It's a highlighter concealer, you can use it around your lips to kind of plump up your lips to really add impact to a bold lip colour, you can use it on your cheekbones, you can use, use it for many things but it's not going to give you extreme coverage. Now I think this is perfect for me in particular because I don't have extreme bad bags I just want to illuminate the area so I actually picked one of these up yesterday and I got the colour 2.5 luminous vanilla and they have so many shades now I, I know when it started to get popular they relaunched um they relaunched it with a couple more shades so they have light to dark to, to pink undertones they have just so many shades so I really do recommend this if you want to fall in love with the product again I just love it so I just apply this in the areas that I get dark which is here, like I always say, just in the darker areas. You don't need to apply it all over your eye. 
less is more when it comes to makeup, especially with makeup that's correcting your skin. The smallest amount, because you don't want it to look like makeup, you want it to look natural. And I like to apply a bit here as well because I get red around the nose and I'm sure a lot of people get red around the nose as well. Okay, so now once I've taken that, I'm going to take a fluffy brush. Um, you can use the MAC 217. This is a Zoeva 227 Soft Definer. Something with a goat hair would be great. And I just work that into the skin. And it just lifts the area, illuminates it, but it doesn't give it that cakey coverage. And because it's designed to use under the eyes, if you use it anywhere else on the face, it's going to do the same thing. It's not going to crease, it's not going to look like makeup. It's just going to enhance what you already have, which is the sort of the sort of makeup that I love for every day and whenever I'm doing any sort of look, I always base the skin off this. Now I'm going to be using the smallest amount of powder, and this is the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. Works on light to medium skin tones. It's just the perfect powder for people that don't like powder, um, if you have dry skin in particular. Um, it doesn't totally mattify the skin, but it prolongs the wear of makeup, gets rid of any sweaty shine. So if you're on set and your model has, you know, shine here, which isn't meant to be there, and it doesn't photograph well, a little bit of this will work wonders and it just looks amazing on the skin. So I'm just applying a bit of this. Just tap it into the skin. And this is a highlighter brush by Makeup Forever. This is the one... Five, two. Just use a little bit round here. Okay, now moving on to brows. Um, I always think with brows, the more space you have here, the better. So if you have brows that go like this, you know, try and tweeze them here just so your eyes look a bit more lifted, something like that. So I always try and do that. And when I was younger, my eyebrows were extremely round like this. And even though I have quite a strong face, and your eyebrows do tend to be, um, do tend to suit you more when you have a strong face to have softer eyebrows. Um, it just made me look upset all the time. So I just try and brush them up and just push them away from the face. It makes a huge difference. So I just like to brush them. Oops. Okay, and then I like to go in with some brow gel. At the moment, I have been liking the Anastasia Beverly Hills um, brow gel. This was a little sample, actually. Sephora are amazing for giving me samples that uh, I use, and then I come to really like the product, and then they get me hooked, basically. Then I have to buy the full-size one. So. so this one's good. It does feel a bit tight on the brows. Like, when you apply this and it sets, you do feel it a little bit. I mean, it's not that irritating, but it really does hold the brows. So I like to do this before I apply product, just so you can really get the architecture of the brows and you can lift them up. And honestly, the moment I've really been into Anastasia, or Anastasia, however you say it, brow products, I think they're great. I love the brow whiz, but for me, it just, I just go through it so fast. So at the moment, I'm not buying it, but I do like that product. Um, and I have been really into the Dip Brow, Dip Brow Pomade. And this one is notorious for making your eyebrows look like, you know, big block brows. But if you know how to use it, it can be amazing. I actually wear this to the gym because it's so um, long wearing and sweat proof. It does not come off. And I feel like when I fill my eyebrows in a little bit, it just makes the world of difference. This colour is dark brown. And it doesn't have any red tones to it. So it's pretty good. It's... Is it a little bit lighter than my brow hair? Yeah, it's definitely lighter than my brow hair. My brow hair is almost black, so I like to go a little bit lighter, so I avoid looking very, very heavy. So I really like this colour. And my ultimate favourite brow brush to use, which I think everyone should own, um, is the Elena Boudreau. I think this is called the Synthetic Eyeliner Brush. But it's really, really compact and dense. It doesn't move. When you wash it, the bristles don't um, separate. And because it's synthetic, it's very compact and you can create the same strokes that you would with a brow whiz 
with a brush so if you have the right brush and you use this it's just amazing so take a bit of the gel like this get the brush all covered in the product and then with the back of the lid I just like to tap off the excess and then I really like to start from the arch so about here fill in a couple of areas here and kind of do upwards hair like strokes and if you make a mistake just brush it off before it sets it's really easy to correct any mistakes so I just take the brush at the angle the hair is growing and then just add a couple of hairs and then when I have a small small amount on the brush still that's when I go into the front So once the brows are done, I'm going to go in with some blush and I have been reaching a lot for the Benefit Powder Wowzer Blush Compact and it has a, what the hell is this, it's not Laguna is it, what's it called? Hula, okay Hula, Coralista and Bella Bamba is it? But this is really useful tr for travelling and you know, using quickly in the morning if you just want a little bit of bronze or a little bit of pink and I've been using this colour quite a bit I really like it it's very natural it has a little bit of shimmer in it it just lifts the face up and it's just a great product um, so I'm going to use a little bit of that see it gives a really pretty shine really really like it Now I'm just going to take a little bit of the Laura Mercier Baked Matte Radiance Baked Powder and this is the highlight shade, they do bronze shades as well, it's kind of a champagne highlight, just taking a fluffy brush and just dotting it in the inner corner, just to open the eye up, this looks flattering on pretty much everyone, because the idea is, is that you want your eyes to open up and be less close to each other so I love that no matter what makeup I'm doing that just looks beautiful okay so to define the eyes I'm going to be using my all-time favorite gel liner which I use every single day without fail now I'm a contact lens wearer and my eyes are very sensitive if I use any sort of coal um, kajal liner in my waterline it just transfers onto my contact lens which results in <laughs> which results in me having to keep buying more contact lenses because you just cannot get the makeup out and this product was used on me in a, a makeup class that I did and the, the instructor we used, was using it on me and I f like fell in love with it after I used it and it's called the aqua black cream sh eyeshadow but obviously it's a eyeliner and it only comes in black looks like this and it's just creamy, it's soft, beautiful to blend, great to use as a liner. It just dries super fast because it's waterproof. But if you work fast, it's great. I like to use this on my top waterline because it gives me an appearance of thicker lashes without looking like I have a ton of makeup on. So that's the reason that I like to use it. So that's what I'm going to do today. And I hate doing this on camera. I don't know why, but I feel like when I watch the footage back, it's just like me doing this. And it's just not flattering, but I'm going to kind of try and show you. Um, I like to use this brush here because it's not it doesn't come to a full point so if you use it on um, models whatever you, you're doing um, it doesn't irritate that eye and make them water just because it's a little bit more less tickly if that makes sense okay so now I'm just going to curl my lashes and these are the Shu Urumura eyelash curlers so for mascara I'm using the Makeup Forever Smoky Extravagant and normally when you take your applicator out of the actual packaging it's loaded with product and then you go in and your eyelashes tend to look clumpy and unrealistic and not feathery if that makes sense. So I like to take a tissue and literally pull 90% of the product off the wand. 
so the applicator looks less clumpy and just a little bit more feathery and that way you can really go into the eye and stain the lashes rather than kind of build up product So to open the eyes up a little bit more, I'm using the Makeup Forever um, Concealer Pencil. This comes in one shade and it's a dual ended um, pencil. You can also use it to perfect the lip line um, and you can use it to pinpoint ble blemishes. So it has a multitude of uses. I'm just applying this on the bottom and the great thing with the liner is that it doesn't transfer to the bottom so you get a really nice clean line. Now I'm just going to take a bit of the Elizabeth Arden 8 hour cream, the fragrance free one because it's a little bit better to use fragrance free if you're going to use it around your eyes. Um, taking a bit on my finger and I'm just dotting it in the centre of the lid. And this just gives the lid a nice iridescent shine, it wakes up the eye and it just looks beautiful. So that's the eyes done. Now for lips. I was in Sephora the other day and I picked up a new lip product. Where is it? Please don't tell me I've lost it. Okay, here it is. Um, this is the Bite Beauty um, High Pigment Pencil. And when I'm doing my lips on an everyday basis, I like to use kind of lip pencils, like crayons, like the NARS Matte Lip pencil but the only annoying thing with that is that you have to sharpen it it's not one of those turn up things so I'm wanting to get into these products in particular and I think they're like 90 something percent natural which is amazing first of all and um, they just have the most amazing selection of colours and I just love the brand's image and everything about the brand and I haven't actually got a colour like this except for in my kit so I wanted to buy this and this is called um, Bokeh really nice colour and it's one of little twist up things so I'm going to apply that on my lips and I think I'm just going to apply a bit to the back of my hand take my finger and then just blot it onto my lips because that way if it's everyday makeup you're not going to have to keep reapplying it because if you go right in and you make a perfect line, it's going to wear down quicker and if you do it this way it's just going to look a little bit more like a stain. So that is the everyday makeup that I do pretty much every day. I normally just um, try different lip colours but the eyes pretty much stay the same and I might try you know, a couple of different blush colours but the basis of the look is something that I do every single day and I can do it quick when I'm not explaining everything you know but um, yeah I really enjoy it for me getting ready is like a ritual and it's really um, fun to try new products and things so I hope that you learned something from this